Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm sure we can all agree at this point that AMD are on a roll for their CPUs, if nothing else. Zen 5 has been received extremely well in servers, of course. It's starting to really just impress the HPC slash data center companies. And AMD's uh, market share there has just started to skyrocket over the last couple of generations of Epic. But on the desktop, Products like the 9800X 3D have just completely and utterly solidified and galvanized AMD's product leadership when it comes to gaming, at least for this generation. Intel certainly do have some arguments that you may want to go for Arrow Lake, and allegedly Intel have also stated that there's a lot of performance left on the table. They're going to be releasing some updates for Arrow Lake, which is going to be taking place in December. But either way, the 9800X 3D is a fantastic part. And if you can afford to build your system with one of these and a GPU that can take advantage of it, which I'm assuming at this point, if you're going to build a system, you're probably going to buy the next generation cards like a 5080 or a 5090 or something like that, then, oh boy, you're going to have a pretty good gaming system. <laughs> but um, with that said, things never stop. And so there are a couple of very interesting roadmaps which have popped up online for GPUs and APUs from AMD. And we're going to get into all of this plus more after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. Bookies.com is a trusted and reliable way to save money on Windows 10, Windows 11 keys, as well as Microsoft Office and tons of games coming out on the PC. Let's face it, there are lots of hardware releases over the next couple of months, including all of the Zen 5 X 3D parts. We've had Intel's Arrow Lake, plus new graphics cards such as RDNA 4 and RTX 50 are on the horizon. So there's a good chance that you may want to be upgrading for yourself or perhaps a loved one over the Christmas period or early next year. So now is a great time to buy. And I personally use Hookies for my own uh, copies of Windows 10 as well as other software. Right now, their Black Friday sale offers even bigger savings. You'll find discounts on Windows 10, Windows 11, Microsoft Office, as well as Game Keys. Plus, you can use our promo code, which is RGT, for an additional discount across their already reduced software range. As a good example, the Windows 11 Pro official price is $199, US but using our exclusive code, you can pick it up for just $23 US during the sale. A 25% off code also applies site-wide, letting you save money on a wide range of popular software. You can grab Windows 10 for $17, US, Microsoft Office 2019 for only $48, US, and many more great bargains. Simply type in RGT at the checkout and click Apply to instantly get 25% off. And then complete your purchase and the key will be sent to your email within 3-5 to five minutes. As mentioned, WhoKeys provides safe, legitimate and verified Windows 10 keys starting at just $17 US with our code. And don't forget, of course, if you do purchase Windows 10, it automatically qualifies you to a free upgrade to Windows 11. Additionally, there's Windows and Office packages. They also have a wide selection of Steam games, PlayStation Store gift cards, as well as daily deals. So enjoy an extra 25% off during their Black Friday sale with the code RGT. So again, you can save yourself an extra 25% if you use the coupon code RGT, which you can apply in the checkout process. Thanks very much to hookies.com for sponsoring the video. And also thank you if you decide to check out the link in the description. It really does help uh, support the channel. And uh, thanks very much for watching the ad. So as a quick disclaimer, this, of course, has been obtained courtesy of leaks. The leaker in this case has been we um, Weibo's Golden Pig Upgrade. And uh, Golden Pig Upgrade have had a pretty good track record in the past. Uh, but obviously, some of the stuff may be cancelled or changed because some of these products are a little bit far out. Um, also, I want to give courtesy credit to WCCF Tech, where I initially spotted this. We're going to begin with the um, roadmaps for the GPU first, because I think it's going to be the quicker of the products to go through. So, at this point in time, of course, Nave 3X, such as 31, 32, and so on, comprise the high-end gaming performance of AMD's GPU roadmap. But naturally, going into 2025 and 2026, Nave 4X is going to be the order of the day. 48 is going to be the higher performance product and 44 the lower performance. The rumor, for those who don't know, roughly speaking, in a way, 48 in raster performance anyway, is going to be roughly on par with the flagship N31 parts. 
Of course, there's still a lot of variables here, like the final clock speeds of the RX 8000 series. I've heard it's going to be comfortably low to mid 3 gigahertz, but one, is that true? And does that represent best case scenario for boost and so on and so forth? And also, even if it is true, that doesn't necessarily mean anything in terms of performance. There's a lot of other stuff that really needs to kind of fall in line. It's going to be very interesting to see how these parts actually perform in the real world. But either way, the rumor has it roughly 7900 XT to XTX. And ray tracing performance is, well, seemingly significantly better. We've already seen some previews of that, of course, with the PlayStation 5 Pro. So we can imagine AMD are going to do quite well for its ray tracing. It's probably not going to beat the RTX 50 cards, but it's still going to be decent enough. AMD are also, of course, going to be doing some type of thing with N33, and there's also going to be a lot of low-end products, which are ultimately going to be focusing on their... Um, APU lineup as well, which of course again makes sense, especially for the desktop, uh, sorry, for the laptop space. Um, we'll talk about Sarlacc specifications in just a moment because Sarlacc does look very impressive, also known as the Strix Point Halo product. But um, I think really the thing for AMD is that they're going to be facing a lot of competition. Battle, uh, Battle Mage from Intel at this point is a, it's just a big old question mark for me. One, how well will it do in the market? regardless of how well it performs in terms of, you know, well, performance. And obviously things like, you know, driver support, blah, blah, blah. But we can know for certain that NVIDIA are going to do NVIDIA things. Now, one way AMD, of course, can compete very well is just having a good product, but at a very good price. Ultimately, AMD also don't want to undercut the market significantly, I would imagine, because let's just hypothetically say, and I'm just going to make up prices. These are not leaks. I just want to really focus on just stressing that this is not a leaked price. But let's just say AMD releases a product which is roughly going to be the same as, let's say, this generation's RTX 4080, right, for RDNA 4. Again, I'm just making this up as an example. And NVIDIA were like, okay, well, that's going to be our performance of like the 50, the 5060 Ti or 5070 or whatever. And AMD say, well, we're just going to release this thing at like 499 US dollars or maybe even cheaper, maybe even 450 bucks. Again, I'm just making up any numbers. The thing is, NVIDIA could just really... Basically, AMD probably don't want to do too much of a war of attrition, at least in my opinion, for NVIDIA because... NVIDIA have just so much market, they can really just squeeze the margins. Also, it's not good necessarily for them going forward because of bill of material costs and stuff like that. So it's really going to depend on a lot of different factors. I'll be very interested, though, to see what the prices are. The rumor is that AMD are going to be very aggressive with pricing, but they also don't want to make it where their margins are so razor thin that they're just not making any profit at all, because obviously what's the point? Um, so it seems anyway that RDNA 4 is going to be the, the de facto solution for AMD in the high end. Well, I'll say their high end anyway until some point in 2026. I've heard RDNA um, 5 or UDNA to give it its proper name most likely going forward. That's going to be like 2027 onwards. So at that point, Rubin, theoretically, should also come to the market. The thing with Rubin is, again, I'll believe it when I see it, Rubin is allegedly going to be MCM. Whether NVIDIA will do that or not, I'm not 100% certain. Everyone I've spoken to said that that is the current plan. With that said, NVIDIA seem very reluctant to do it. Having said that, MCM doesn't necessarily mean it's got multiple uh, compute chiplets, which seems to be the direction that AMD are taking for RDNA 5. Maybe NVIDIA will do something entirely different for Rubin, maybe move the cache off or something like that. Who knows? It's going to be very interesting, though, to see what Rubin uh, actually does in terms of, well, just overall design. Um, hopefully, we'll get more leaks on that soon. But obviously, at this point, we just need Blackwell to release. But now let's move on to the APU side of things. Um, I think a good place for us to start on that would actually be Strix Point Halo, also known as Sarlacc. I'm not going to spend too long on this because uh, the specifications of Sarlacc and other products have been pretty well established at this point. 
but we also have the name courtesy of golden pig upgrade uh, confirmed quote unquote it's the ryzen ai max plus pro whatever 395 with 16 cores 32 threads um, support for lp um uh, 8000 memory and the the uh graphics branding is 8060s and uh, again we have conf confirmation excuse me of 40 compute units again we've seen this pretty much confirmed previously the main difference between let's say the 95 and the uh, sorry the 395 and the 390 is while everything else remains the same the core count drops so we have 12 cores 24 threads moving on to the roadmap for the ape uh, for the ultra slim and all rounders 2024 obviously we've got products like strix point and hawk point i won't read those because we know what they are already so there's not much point uh 2025 is going to be the introduction of strix point uh, ai 300 you can see the specs yourself so we've got for example four zen 5 and eight zen 5 c cores and 16 rdna 3.5s and in 2026, we're going to see a Strix point refresh and a Kraken point refresh. Put an asterisk there. We'll get into what that might be in just a second. Um, and in the Enthusiast Gaming and MWS, 2023, 2024, obviously, we've seen Dragon Range. And then moving into 2025 and 2026, we have Fire Range R9, which is Zen 5 slash X3D, DDR5 5600 and uh, two cu rdna2 and then obviously we also have strix point halo which i won't read out the specs again because well i just read them out now i will add i have personally heard the strix point refresh rumor before i just haven't reported it the reason i haven't reported it is i just was told that there may be a refresh of strix point and that was it so i don't really know what's going on um one person told me there might be some tweaks to the architecture, but I have absolutely no idea what those may be. So I kind of, um, it, it is very possible there are just no tweaks. Um, I have, however, been told that there might be some changes in terms of the CCD and IOD. It possibly is going to benefit slightly from a slightly changed CCD. So it might be more desktop-like, quote-unquote. But again, I don't really know about that. It seems it's very wishy-washy, so I really would not put much stock in that at all. All I can say is I have heard that this is true, but again, there was just no point in reporting it because I just don't know anything about it. It's just like, well, I've heard this might happen with no details, so it just seemed kind of pointless to mention it. Um, maybe I mentioned it in a video once in passing, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. Anyway, the fact is, it's going to be an absolutely packed couple of years for AMD. The rumor also seems to, and I reported this a couple of days ago, of course, we're going to see the Fred Ripper next generation processors. Uh, allegedly, they may also support um, Vcash as well, potentially even across all of the CCDs, which it's not probably going to help us, at, you know, if you're just gaming, but if you're trying to do content creation, 3D rendering, whatever then that's going to make that platform ridiculously appealing. So I think this generation of products is going to be quite weird. Um, again, you may have seen yourself that there is a rumor, well, not even a rumor, Intel themselves have basically said that um, uh, Arrow Lake is not really performing how they initially anticipated. So they're going to be doing some type of BIOS update and working with Microsoft for blah, blah, blah. Um, and that's going to be at some point in December. It actually makes me think maybe I should just wait on some of the testing that I was going to be conducting because otherwise I'm going to have to do that testing twice. So maybe I'll just wait because I actually have a board and I also have a um, our, like, processor from Intel. I'm just, just kind of need to assemble it because I only just got the board a couple of days ago. Uh, but now I'm like, well, do I just kind of wait because otherwise I'm going to have to redo all these testing. I guess I could maybe do it just for a comparison sake. But um, anyway, it's going to be very interesting to see how those changes actually impact gaming performance. Obviously, you may have seen yourself that the Arrow Lake performance has just really just kind of changed based on different reviewers. Like the, the performance data, especially at launch, was just really weird. Um, with some weird things, I, I think it was something weird with the Windows Power Plan as well, if memory serves. Anyway, the point is, unless Intel can pull out some type of absolute miracle, 
They are not going to be outperforming the 9800X3D though, because that thing is just, it's just rapid. It's really bloody fast. Um, so that's the only, I mean, I mean, it's kind of like um, an or did kind of problem, as in like it's a, it's a very, like it's a good problem, but it's also kind of a, a slightly boring problem in that when you have basically no competition for the gaming side of things, it makes recommendations kind of boring, at least if you've got the money to buy like a, a 9800X3D. I think it becomes actually more interesting if you're like, well, you know, do you remember, for example, I mean, this is going back quite a bit. Do you remember, for example, when the um, first generation Zens came out or even um, Zen Plus? So you had like the Ryzen 1000 and 2000 series. It's like, well, AMD do okay in gaming, but Intel definitely are better with the, what was it out at the time, 7700K, right, for the flagship. And then they released, um, I think it was like the, I think the 8700K came out six months later or something like that. As for memory, I've not Googled that in a while. Anyway, the point is, at that point, there was like a real kind of like, well, I do gaming only, so Intel may be the better solution, but do I kind of wait for Coffee Lake? Then again, those extra threads might be handy, but hey, actually, I also do a lot of content creation or I do a lot of 3D rendering or Photoshop. Hmm, maybe in that case possibly I should go with Ryzen. You know, it's just, it's kind of a more interesting thing. But again, I'm not really complaining about this. It, it's kind of like, eh, but it does make things a little more intriguing anyway. With that said, I do I do think that uh, Arrow Lake is pretty good. And if Intel can improve the performance with an update, that will be pretty spiffy. But for right now, um, yeah, it's very hard to argue that uh, the Vcash technology that AMD really adopted for Zen, um, it was one of the best decisions they've made, to be honest with you. It is really impressive. And I think it also bodes extremely well also going forward for like Zen 6. Um, because we can really start to see how, if they do improve the IOD for uh, Medusa, which is a code name for uh, Zen 6 on the client side of things, that's the desktop and um, mobile. I think there could be, uh, just, I think it's going to be really impressive. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.